This video is intended for audiences over the age of 13. If you are not 13 years or older, please click away from this video now. You have been warned. What's going on you guys? It's your man James aka JP back again with another Toy Room Review and today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Game of Ham board game. Now I know the name sounds crazy, just stick with me because this game is actually tons of fun. Before we get into actually what the game is and how to play it, we are going to do a quick unboxing. I do want to start off with some of the paperwork and also want to say thank you to the people over at Game of Ham for sending this out for me to review for you guys. Even though they did send it out to me for free for review, I genuinely do love this game. It's tons of fun and it's such a unique fresh breath of air on the board game genre. So let's start off with this paperwork that came in the package. This is so you can follow them on their social media accounts you can scan these QR codes if you would like or if you want to visit their website then on the back pretty much the same thing but you can leave reviews and sign up for their email listings and whatnot so there you go right also, there so there's this paper here that basically just shows what's included in the package and as you can see there is a lot it's actually a little overwhelming but we're gonna go ahead and get through it so if you guys want to see everything that comes in the package you can go ahead and pause that and read all of that and then you can also take a look at the back and this is pretty much the gist of how to play but there is a whole bunch of other different variables and other stuff that we'll get to in a second but if you guys do want to read that you can go ahead and pause that right there hopefully the glare is not too bad and then you can see that right there so let's go ahead and jump into you can the see right here on the front it says the game of ham and you do have a pig dressed in like a whole chef slash like slaughterhouse type of outfit which is pretty funny holding up a piece of ham wham bam let's go ham and you can see this is meant for adults there is adult humor in this this is not meant for kids whatsoever trust me on that one uh, and then you can see right here a short video of how to play the game of ham the way to play the game is with the cards and the board together in this mode Players start at the beginning white spot and must make their way through the board and finish on the last goal spot. The way you move forward is through winning card tricks. One judge reads a gray prompt card, and each player then plays a pink response card they feel is appropriate for it. This does not need to be literal, and oftentimes it isn't. It's primarily humor based. The judge picks a winner they enjoyed the most amongst the responses, and that player wins the gray prompt card and becomes the judge for the following round. At the bottom of each prompt card, there are two numbers. When you win, you have the option of moving either number in any direction you like. In a game that has more than 8 players, you may also choose to do the sum of the two numbers as well. When you land on a spot, draw a colored card from the deck that corresponds with the spot you landed on. These are abilities in the game that give you an edge in a variety of ways, but can also be saved later to assist you with winning. Every colored card has rules clearly stated on the bottom, so you'll have no confusion on when and how to use it. Gray cards have the letters H, A, and M dispersed randomly on the backs of each card. Players who can spell ham with the gray cards they've won can negate the effects of colored cards. Once this happens, those gray cards are spent and cannot be used for this ability again. If you land on a number rather than a spot that earns you a colored card, this means you move forward the number stated, but any spot you land on will not get you a card. If you land on a bounce spot, nothing happens, but they count as checkpoints. Under most circumstances, you can't be bounced further than that point. You'll be grateful for this because when one player lands on another's piece, they bounce them back to the nearest white bounce. There are also bounce cards dispersed in each of the colored card piles for some secret punishment. Once you reach the final goal spot, you must be able to land on it exactly. Any surplus amount will result in your piece backtracking the difference in amount. This is where there is an advantage to the smaller number on each of the gray cards, and also where there is an advantage to holding on to your color cards. By handing a chosen color card to a target player, you may move your piece forward one space. By handing a chosen color card to a random player, you may move forward two spaces. This rule can be done at any point, and it is for the group to decide if moving forward by trading color cards allows you to bounce the player. Right, coming to the way. side, you got Game of Ham. 3 to 15 plus players, ages 18 plus, 30 minutes plus. So you can have a huge party with this game, which is insane. Uh, it just has the Game of Ham all the way throughout, and coming to the back... There you go. Pretty much what was on that paper that I showed you guys a second ago. So there is that. Let's go ahead and crack this. You get a quick start guide, which basically tells you the basic way to play the game. But like I mentioned, there are a bunch of other different ways to play the game, different variables and everything like that. And here is the instruction booklet. Very nice, printed in color, very high quality. And yeah, as you can see, it is very, very thick. Tons of pages of just all the different ways that you can play the game, all the different variables. You can play the game regular mode. You have an alcoholic mode. You have uh, 
a drug mode I think there, there's just so many different like game modes so the replayability is actually very very high on this but we're just gonna go through the standard version of how to play the game for the sake of time in today's video but just be aware there's endless possibilities of how to play this game moving on you have some of the game pieces right here which are actually done in very high quality cardboard very nice high glossy high resolution image right here so you can see the green ham and then you have this orange ham and then you have a red ham and a yellow ham if I can get it out so very nice high quality resolution on the images and then you have the game board which is made of that same high quality cardboard very nice high res I mean again it's not like insanely detailed it is just squares but it just looks very nice the colors pop it's very crisp and here is the rest of the game board so you have four different pieces and you have different ways that you can arrange the game board which we'll get into in just a little bit you also have some of these ham little tokens right here. These are like your playing pieces, so think of like Monopoly. This would be like your, you know, your playing piece that you move with. So they have a bunch of different colors. This is just one that's right here at the top. I think the rest of them are buried at the bottom, which we'll get into in a second. So then here are the cards. And the cards, again, are done in a nice high quality image. So it's very nice, very sharp. Everything feels nice. They don't feel like cheap cards. You can see it says Game of Ham on the back. And then you have all these different phrases and whatnot all on the front. And there's like 800 cards in here, so I'm obviously not going to go through every single one. Uh, but you can see that right there is one of the tokens actually just fell out from in between the cards. But yeah, very, very nice right here. So I think that's everything. Oh, there's some other cards in here as well that I do want to show off. Different color and of cards of what you can do. So here are the black cards. Again, very, very nice. And you have these green cards. You have more of the same cards, just in like yellow, orange, and red, and whatnot. So, like I said, there's a whole bunch of cards in here, so I'm not going to go through all of them one by one. But now I do want to show you guys how you actually play the game and what the game is all about. So let me go ahead and set up the board and everything, right, and then you we'll guys, so you are going to have to bear with me because this is a little wide for my review station, so sorry about the angle, but I'll do the best that I can to kind of show this off. So to pretty much describe this game... I would say think of it as a mixture of like Cards Against Humanity meets like Monopoly or like the game of life. So basically the whole goal of the game is you're trying to get from one end of the board to the other. So you start on this white space all the way over here and you need to try and get to this gold space all the way over here. Now there's going to be different variables and different things that are going to try and prevent you from getting here or move you further back. Uh, in the game board and whatnot so I'll go through some of that and show you some of the different scenarios that you could come across while playing this game here are some of the game pieces that I was telling you about so think of this just like Monopoly these would be like your token pieces that uh, which color you pick is which game piece you are and that's the piece that you're gonna move throughout the board And you can see they just have like a whole bunch of different variations of colors from light greens to dark greens whites blues yellows pinks purples like pretty much whatever your favorite color is guaranteed it's probably in here I'm just gonna put uh, uh, two pieces down I don't know red and or blue I'm sorry blue blue and green we're gonna go with this blue and green here and we're gonna put them on the starting board right there now do keep in mind you do need at least three players to play this game but I'm by myself right now so I'm gonna show you the best to my ability so here we go so one person is going to draw a black card from the deck this is going to be the judge so they are just gonna draw one of the random black cards so we'll just I don't know we'll pick this one right here and it says, what made the Titanic sink? And you can see right down here, it has the number two or the number three. So this is for the judge. Now, the other players are going to pick some of their pink cards, which are these right here. And this is where it kind of gets like Cards Against Humanity. So you have to pick the funniest card that you have that relates to this black card here. So what made the Titanic sink? So let's go ahead and see what the best card that we can find is it either has to be funny or just makes sense um, with the card and I'm gonna go with this one simply because of the affair uh, that Jack and Rose were having in the movie now what's interesting about these pink cards is for every phrase that's up here they actually have a full-blown description of it right down here some stuff is pretty straightforward but if somebody doesn't know let's say what SNM is then you have the description right there on the bottom and some of these descriptions are just pretty straightforward and accurate to what it is but some of them are just hilarious like let me see if I can find one um, here like this one a guy with a mean look and a shotgun 
just no questions asked. So that's funny right there. And then like sucking on an earlobe. If you guys can't read it, it says earlobes are an enormous zone of the human body. This means that it has heightened sensitivity and can be a major turn on. Looking to do some kinky blank suck away. So that's just funny. Each and every single one of these cards has their own definition at the bottom. Uh, anyways, I'm going to pick the uh, Knight of Hardcore SNM and put that to match with that card. And theoretically, in this case, the judge is gonna pick me, so my card wins. So now what happens is I obviously discard this and draw another pink card, but also I get to keep this black card here because I won that round. Uh, so you will notice that each of the black cards has a different uh, letter on the back of it. This one has H, this has M, some of them have A. As you start collecting black cards, as you get some that spell ham, that enables you to have different like power-ups and different abilities throughout the game. So that's a nice little variable. Uh, but anyways, going back to this, so I was mentioning that on the bottom it has 2 slash 3. So because I won this card, I now have the ability to move either 2 or 3 spaces, either or, in whatever direction that I would like. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We'll just move this green one here three spaces. So I can either go down right here three spaces or two spaces. Or I can go to the right two or three spaces. But I'm just going to go down. Uh, let's see. One, two. We'll go three spaces right here. So I landed on this red tile. Whenever you land on one of these colored tiles, you pick up the corresponding colored cards so as you can see that's where these come in here so these are the ham pieces which show you which cards you need so this the red ham the red card right there and this gives you a power up so you can switch up to two of your pink cards so if if some of the pink cards in your hand uh you don't like or they don't make any sense or whatever you can take them out and then pick two new cards from the deck at random. Uh, you don't get to go through the deck and pitch, pick which one, but you just pick two random cards from the deck, and then you, you obviously discard this once you use it. So landing on each one of these colored spaces every time gives you a different power-up, which is really cool. Now you may see some of these numbers here on the board as well. If you land on one of these numbers, you actually get to move an additional uh, two spaces, or if you land on a zero, you obviously don't move any space. But if you land on one of these numbers, you get to move an additional space depending on the corresponding number that you landed on. And that is pretty much the gist of the game. And you just keep on continuing on, and the whole goal is to try to get all the way over here to the gold part of the board. Now these pink spots are like dead zones, so that's like the out of bounds area. So you will follow anything that is colored or numbered, and you don't go in the pink squares. Those are, you, you just don't go there. I, I don't know, it's, it's like a maze basically. Uh, and then you have all these white pieces, which are checkpoint pieces. So let's say in theory, I get all the way over here and someone else also ends up landing on my space, they send you back to the nearest checkpoint. So that would send me all the way back there. So for instance, if I am over here and somebody lands on this space, now they end up sending me back to the nearest checkpoint, which in theory is this one right here. So that is where it gets really competitive and really fun because you can start sending people back all the way to the back of the board. And the whole goal is you need to get over, over here to this gold piece right here. But it's not as simple as just getting all the way here to the gold piece because you have to get the exact number. So for instance, if I'm here, I now have one, two, three more spaces to get to this gold space. Now let's say I end up winning a black card that has, for instance here, this is this is a good example right here. So this one has two or six on the bottom. Now if I move two spaces, that's gonna move me right here, which is fine in theory, but now my next turn, let's say I win another card. So we went back to the Titanic card, but let's say I were to win a card that has two or three on the bottom while I'm positioned right there where I'm positioned. Well now, obviously, I need one space to get here. And even though it says two or three, it's not boom, I'm here and I'm done. No, you have to have the exact number of spaces to get into this gold piece. So for instance, if I'm here and I move two or three spaces, I have to now overshoot it. So it would be one, two, three, or one, two. And then on the next turn, I would try and get backwards to come here. But basically, you have to have the exact number of spaces. So for instance, if I'm here, I gotta get one, two, three, I need four to land on the gold marker. So it's not just as simple as getting to the end of the board. You actually have to use some strategy and a little bit of luck as well to try and get that exact number right here. And it can get pretty intense when you have somebody here and somebody here and you both are trying to fight to get there and then you may land on their space and whatnot. Or you may get some of these other power-ups here, which I do want to show off. So you have a power-up just like this one right here. Boom, boom. And then you have like some of these as well. And then these 
as well. And like I mentioned, if you collect some of the black cards and they end up spelling ham, like in this instance right here, you can see it spells ham, well, you can pretty much become immune from somebody using this on you. So if somebody tries to use this, but you have three cards that spell ham, then you can become immune from that. And then there's a whole bunch of other different variables and variations and different ways to play and a whole bunch of different rules. Like I said, the rule book is pretty elaborate and pretty packed with just the amount of stuff you can do with this game. The way that I just showed you is a basic gist of the game and I will say it is really really fun and what I also love is the board doesn't necessarily have to go this way. You can mix the board around and rearrange the pieces uh, you know to make sense whichever way you want it to make sense. So I just flipped that one around. They are double sided so like I don't know I could flip this one around to be like this so now that the only way you can get to this board is if you go up here here and here and then you can go all around so that adds a nice little uh, extra amount of gameplay and variation into the game as well so the possibilities are really endless with this game there's so much you can do uh, just playing it the standard way will last you a while and it is tons of fun but every now and then if you do want to switch it up and play a different way you can do that which is just very very right, so awesome guys, so there's my review of the brand new game of ham board game I know this was a little bit of a long video. I know it may be just a little bit confusing for me trying to explain it with just one person here, but honestly, it is a really, really fun game. I have game nights almost every weekend with some of my friends, and this has been one of the most requested games to play when people come over, just because we're tired of the regular Cards Against Humanity, Monopoly, you know, the same games that we play over and over again. This is a new breath of fresh air. It's very fun, very competitive, very strategic as well, because you have to plan out all of your movements and whatnot so i would highly recommend this game like i said game of ham did send this out for me to review for you guys but all these thoughts and opinions are genuinely my own i really truly do love this game it is tons of fun if you guys want to follow them over on their social media or their websites you can scan these qr codes or if you already picked up a copy of the game and you want to leave them a review you can go ahead and scan some of these qr codes as well but yeah like i said this game tons of fun tons of replayability and you can play with three people or you can play with 15, 20 people. The possibilities are pretty much endless. So that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with your friends. Be sure to follow me on Instagram. That link's in the description down below. Also, check out some of my other videos that are popping up on the screen for you guys to click on. And I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. So as always, guys, stay tuned for more. And I'll see you guys next time.